Indie Mogul. This week on Indie News, short films from the Sundance Film Festival, a new database of what equipment films are shot on, I learn more about the upcoming digital Bolex camera, and interview the creators to find out if it's the right filmmaking tool for you. Hey Indie Mogulers, Griffin here. This week is the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, and luckily for YouTubers, 12 of the 64 short films playing at Sundance are available online. Really I especially out. enjoy this retro-looking drug film about catnip, which I remember watching last summer when it first debuted. If you're like me, you often look up film information at IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. And over the last few months, a similar project, called Shot on What, has been collecting technical information about films, like what camera, lenses, and editing software they use. Speaking of filmmaker tools, don't let the retro look of the digital Bolex D16 fool you. When this camera is released, hopefully soon, it'll shoot 2K raw video, perfect for movie making, at the relatively low price tag of $3,300. For the same price, some may prefer the Canon 5D Mark III with its full-frame sensor, and others who also want to shoot raw may prefer the Blackmagic Cinema camera. But all of these cameras have their strengths and weaknesses, so I asked the developers of the digital Bolex what unique features it has that may make it the ideal camera for your next film. First, very important question I have for you. You are not the Joe Rubenstein who inks comic books. I am not. <laughs> There's also a famous piano player with my name. But... I'm glad we have that out of the way. It's been nine months since you guys successfully funded this project through Kickstarter, but I imagine you were working on it for much longer. So how, how long has the digital Bolex been in development? At least a year and a half, maybe closer to two years at this point, maybe even five, six years ago. I was, I was dreaming about something like this. His dream? To make movie making affordable with a low cost cinema camera that shoots 2K, the same resolution that most movie theaters project, and it needs to shoot raw because... There's a lot of hidden power in that data that you don't get that they throw away when they give you a compressed image. On a DSLR... Even something as simple as like shooting a scene where something is in silhouette and then maybe wanting to, to bring parts of it up or down, it, it's like a pixelated nightmare. Elle, a seasoned cinematographer, demonstrates the flexibility of RAW in her short film One Small Step, the first film shot on the digital Bolex. Of course, 2K RAW video requires more disk space than compressed video, 5 gigabytes per minute. So you probably wouldn't shoot a wedding on a Bolex. But for a movie, especially as hard drives get bigger and cheaper over time, this is a lot of power for low-budget filmmakers. Which is why so many people were quick to back the Digital Bolex project on Kickstarter. They needed $100,000, but raised more than double, most of it in the first two days of the campaign. This is sort of a cliche now, but the most important thing is to find your audience. Um, we had a very specific group of people that were likely to want to get involved with our project, and we knew who those people were, you know, months ahead of time. So the digital Bolex shoots raw, unlike the Canon 5D Mark III, but its sensor is the size of 16mm film, much smaller than the Mark III's full-frame sensor. Some people would call that a drawback, complain about crop factor. A lot of people ask me what the crop factor of the camera is, and I like to say it's nothing, it's zero, it's one to one, just use 16 millimeter lenses. A lot of digital cameras ignore the legacy of cinema. They're like, well, you know, this chip is slightly bigger, so it must be better, but that's not true. As Joe points out, plenty of movies have been shot on 16mm film, like The Hurt Locker, Black Swan, Moonrise Kingdom. While a full-frame sensor would allow shallower depth of field, as I explained on last week's episode, many of the pixels on a DSLR sensor go unused when shooting video, instead of higher-res photos. The digital Bolex uses every pixel on its sensor, which diminishes aliasing artifacts or more. And by choosing a CCD sensor instead of CMOS, its global shutter avoids the jello effect. Plus, the 16mm sensor size has a long history of compatible lenses. C-mount is the most popular lens format on the planet. Uh, there are more C-mount lenses than any other lenses. Other lens mounts like EF, PL, and Micro Four Thirds will also be available, but unlike other cameras which... force you to buy an entire new camera 
just to put a different kind of lens on there. The digital Bolex has a much cheaper interchangeable front piece because the machinery inside is not changing very much. They also have the ambitious goal to build $250 lenses with the same clarity as $4,000 cinema lenses. What if we get rid of all of the moving parts and all of the options and just give you the the lens at its sweet spot. How cheap can we make that? These will be prime lenses, no zoom, no aperture control, but they'll come in great focal lengths for cinema. And I, I can't say that I've ever shot anything with a pistol grip, so tell me about what that's like. If you're holding a camera out here, you can see my arms are kind of at an angle and it's a lot more work. If you hold it here, you feel like you're in a rested position and you look down at the monitor. The pistol grip is also removable with a tripod mount underneath. Unlike many DSLRs, the digital Bolex maxes out at 400 ISO. Is that enough? Shooting 400 ISO on our camera is kind of like shooting 200 ISO, 400 ISO, and 800 ISO on a DSLR at the same time and retaining all of that data. If you're not lighting, you're not thinking about lighting. If you're not thinking about lighting, you're not thinking about the way that you're telling your story through images. What right now do you guys still have left to do and do you have a, a release date in mind yet? We do have a release date in mind. We have a schedule now of the milestones that we have to hit. And so we want to make sure that we hit those milestones, a couple of the first ones, before we announce the date, because we want to make sure we're actually able to stick to the schedule that we've planned. We have all the parts now. The body's been designed, the electronics have been designed. Um, it's kind of a matter of just putting them together. Well, I, I wish you guys the best of luck, and I, I know uh, there's going to be a lot of excited filmmakers uh, when they get their hands on your cameras. Thanks. I also learned that the digital Bolex has two cold shoe mounts on the body so you can attach accessories and it can shoot 2K raw in a bunch of frame rates up to 32 frames per second or as low as one frame every hour. They also announced last week that they're developing some software to handle the Cinema DNG raw workflow. If you have any questions about the digital Bolex, you should visit digitalbolex.com and they are super responsive on their forums and they do a live chat every other Monday. On today's playlist, I have the catnip video showing at Sundance. I have some old video I discovered and re-edited for last week's episode of Friday 101. And we have this week's new and notable video contests. Plus, if you want to see the full list of Sundance short films, you can click right here. Thanks for watching.